Hey, it's Wong with Sage Chi Secrets. Um, I was just going over some shoulder, um, some shoulder anatomy, and it's not just anatomy, but it's really about thinking through the process of what you may know or what you may not know when it comes to shoulders. And so, one of the biggest things is instead of going and jumping from one thing to another thing like oh I need to know testing or oh, I need to get better at um, hands-on stuff I think it's really key to um, get down to the basics of what you know about shoulders and it's a great way to understand how to explain um, what's going on with the shoulder as well when we're talking to our patients. So what do you know about the shoulder? So we have Vanessa here and she was, you know, we were going over it. So what do you know about the shoulder? So we're gonna start with, um, what do we start with Vanessa? We started with the basics. I said, what do you know about the shoulders? So what's the basic thing that we, want to know about the shoulder. So the basics um, of a shoulder is that is an unstable joint, right? Um, but why? Why is it unstable? It's unstable so that we can have mobility. So we're sacrificing stability for mobility. So when someone comes to you and they're like, why? Why is this happening to my shoulder? Well, I usually start with, well, you know, your shoulder is a really unstable joint. Like it, it just, it gives you a lot of movement. So you get a lot of movement and that's why we tend to develop problems over time with our shoulders and why it becomes painful over time because our shoulder is very unstable and it's unstable so that we can have a lot of movement. So when you look at it, you're like, well, why do you have a lot of movement? Right? So then you can go and understand a little bit of the anatomy. So what makes up the shoulder, um, what makes up the shoulder complex, right? What are the three bones that make up the shoulder complex? We've got the, um, the humerus, right, the humeral head. We have um, the shoulder blade, the scapula, and then we have our collarbone, right? Um, the clavicle. So it's an, another point that I always like to make. It's, uh, it's um, very important to, yes, we always wanna know the correct terminology the humeral head, <laughs> the scapula, and the clavicle. But at the end of the day, you also want to know what the common terminology is, the shoulder blade, the long long arm of your, um, the long bone of your arm called the humerus, and the ball that creates it at the top. Sorry, but you know we have to remember that our uh, patients and our clients that we work with don't have that kind of understanding that we have and we can't make assumptions that they do. You know, we don't want to make assumptions that they don't know, but we want to make it um, increase our chances that of the likelihood that they're going to understand us and what we're saying. And it's huge because if they understand why something is happening, then they are going to have a better chance of understanding why we as shoulder specialists, as occupational therapists can help them. And then we have our, our, our clavicle or our collarbone. And so those are the three bones that make up the shoulder complex. And so when you can understand that and explain it in a way that they understand it, because if they have pain somewhere, they're gonna be like, oh, my pain is here. You know, I have a shoulder problem. And sometimes they don't understand that if their pain is down here, like near the deltoid area, or if their pain is in the back part of their shoulder blade, then it's all a shoulder problem, you know? And who is well equipped to help them? Us, occupational therapists, right? Um, so, you know, having them understand, and you yourself understanding that these are the three bones that make up the shoulder complex um, is really important. And it's this shoulder complex, you know, and then the joint of the ball and socket that is so unstable. Why is it so unstable? Where is all the three bones? How does all the three bones 
connect to the body. So if you want to think about it, um, your finger, like your um, your fingers, they're all like all the little bones of your fingers are attached to your body via its next attachment. So if we take your proximal phalanx, your finger is attached to your metacarpal, and that medical, you know, that bone is attached to your your um, carpal bones, and those carpal bones are attached to the ulna um, and the radius, and the radius um, and ulna are attached to the humerus, and then the humerus and the scapula and the clavicle are attached to what part of the skeleton, what part of the body, is attached right here to your sternum. That's the only bony attachment. That big old shoulder complex is attached to the body. It's the only way it's attached to your bone, right? So when you're explaining to people why they have pain, that's why. That's why they have pain because that whole, those three bones has to support the whole arm via this one little itty bitty point to your sternum, right? That's the only way that shoulder complex, which bears the weight of the whole arm, is attached to the rest of the bones in your body. No other ones um, float like that, right? Everything else is attached to other big parts. Um, and that's why we all tend to have shoulder problems. After the age of 40, it increases. And so if you understand that, it's a great way to help your patients understand why they tend to have shoulder problems. And then once you understand the bones, then you can get into understanding the muscles. And then once you understand the muscles, then you can get into understanding all the observational things that you're gonna be looking at. You're gonna look at normal, right? How it should work normally. And then once you understand how it works normally, then you can understand how abnormalities work. And then once you understand abnormalities, then you can go into testing. And then the testing is where you're gonna really help you pinpoint those key problems. And when you can pinpoint and find those key problems is how you're gonna be able to help and fix those problems so they can uh, get rid of their pain so they can be more active and and get back into their occupation which is you know really when we come down to it um, a lot of people don't understand that word as well and so you want to bring it back to what they want to be able to do with their arm well you want to be able to tie your hair back get dressed put your bra on those are the basics right pull your pants up and people and they have shoulder problems can't pull their pants up especially skinny jeans man it's a pain in the ass <laughs> um, but outside of just your typical ADLs um, you know people want to go to the gym they want to be able to pick up their kids they want to be able to drive to work and drive home to it they want to be able to sleep without pain they want to play sports you know they want to cook and hang out with their family. So when you bring it back to, to that and why they want to fix their shoulder, it really comes back to understanding really the basics. And when you can explain why to somebody those basics, is gonna make it easier for them to understand that you understand their problem and how to fix it. So that's the first segment.